One of these things I'm obsessed with at the moment is trees. Oh, I love them. I think they're the most wonderful thing. Everything about their, their lifestyle. There's so many simple things you could do to improve this. And one of these things I'm obsessed with at the moment is trees. Yes, I was going to ask you about trees. Um, but essentially everywhere you go in London, I mean, I, I'm boring people by tweeting about this all the time, but you just see these spaces. Look at this. Yeah. Right? Huge potential. And, and a facade like this, Without spending a great deal of money, just a few trees in front of it, and the whole thing begins to seem less bleak, yeah. seems more welcoming. And that's before you get into the carbon benefits, the air quality benefits, etc. But look at this, very, very healthy. Nice medium sized tree, doing well. This is an exotic. Yeah. And if you imagine as it begins to grow up, what is, can feel quite bleak suddenly comes to life. But yeah. the, the real point is, if you could get so Sadiq promised to put two million trees in the ground. I think he's delivered 450,000. Mm. So far behind, right? The only Could real feature of this road, actually, is the anti-ram raid bollards in front of these shops. <laughs> right, right, right. And of course, trees can be pretty good anti-ram raid bollards. You don't have to put <laughs> out metal <laughs> things. They look much nicer as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. So you need to produce decent space. You yeah. could produce nearly twice as much space here. This has clearly been vandalized. This route should have been taken out because the diseased route there is almost certainly infecting the new route. Uh -huh. If there was Swiss Paris, you'd have more space around the edge of it. Yeah. This is a good instant thing for watering. You don't need to water too much in London generally because the rainfall is pretty good. Is the no, this okay? looks, no, it looks okay. It looks you, right. you can see that it's budding, yeah, up, it's budding. Okay. It's budding up to the top. Yeah, so that's not too bad. When did your, when did your interest in trees well, that started a very long time ago. So yeah. I, I've planted, um, I've planted something in the region of probably four and a half thousand trees myself. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> and this is, presumably, this isn't just sort of the politician arriving in a foreign country yeah. doing the ceremony no, of tree planting. No, 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 no. To I, get to four and a half thousand. You've got to, got to find no, 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 Yeah, a lot, lot of effort, a lot of effort going in, acre after acre of trees. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Oh, I love them. I think they're the most wonderful thing. I mean, they, they are. Everything about their their lifestyle, their the slowness of their growth, the way that a tree like an oak can outlast us by 400 years, that it can contain 950 different species, many of which are central to us, support our entire ecosystem, their contribution to carbon, etc. So, what is the lifestyle of a tree? <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just mentioned it there. You said so, their lifestyle. So they um are. One of the things we've learned is that they actually uh, communicate with each other. Mm. So in a forest, if a disease begins or a predator begins to affect trees on the outer bit of the forest, very, very slowly signals are sent down their roots connecting one tree to another. They seem to contain memories of their, you know, not obviously in the sense we are humanly conscious, but there is an epigenetics. What happens to them in their early life has a very marked impact on how they develop through the rest of their life. I love the fact that they're so hospitable to so, so many other species. 